Our last speaker this morning is James Aspie, and James is an animal activist hailing from Australia. A few years ago, he took a one-year vow of silence on behalf of the voiceless animals stuck in fatal and exploitative industries. Having lived through transformative battles with life-threatening illnesses himself, James is in touch with the suffering, and his empathy for others shines through in the way he lives his life. In his own words, James replaced drugs, cancer, and bulimia with surfing, veganism, and meditation. So without further ado, please welcome James Aspie. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to stand. <laughs> That's what I'm used to, yeah. Uh, man, that was so good. You really calmed my nerves with your voice. Well, I'm going to have to get onto that meditation class, I think. <laughs> it's kind of hypnotizing. I, when I found out I was going to be doing a speech on veganism and spirituality, which was last night, <laughs> I should really read my emails more carefully. <laughs> I thought, oh man, why am I on that panel? I'm not, I'm not spiritual, you know? I'm not a spiritual person. I don't see myself that way. Um, I'm not religious. I don't have like a collection of crystals. I do burn incense sometimes, but that's just because I think it smells good. So I thought, oh, I don't, know. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. So I thought, well, what is spirituality? And that's what I kind of started thinking about. What is spirituality? And I guess what I came to the conclusion of is that spirituality, I think, in my opinion, is living in a line with spirit, living in a line with your spirit. And then I thought, oh, that's a relief. I am doing that <laughs> as best as I can. <laughs> so I think what that really means is that to, to be a spiritual person, to live spiritually, you need to find out what you're really about, what you're really made of, what is really important to you, what your core values are, and then to do your best to align with each and every one of those things so that you can feel the way that you're supposed to feel. You know, you should feel spiritual if, if that's what it's about. You should feel like you're living in alignment with your core values and the benefit of that is so far-reaching, and the negative implications of not doing that are also so far-reaching. So, for me, I think veganism goes so hand-in-hand hand with that, and I can just tell you through my own experience, because for so many years in my life, I lived without caring about animals at all. I cared about animals less than pretty much everybody that you would know. I just, I thought they were disgusting, dirty, slobbery. You know, when I tell people that in my speeches, how I just didn't care, people are like, is this the guy, man? Is this the guy that did that thing, the vow of silence? But I really, I really felt nothing for them. I remember we ran over a rabbit one day and the girls were crying and I just felt nothing. I'd seen slaughterhouse footage before of animals being tortured, mutilated, killed, and my brother who said, he said to me, he told me to watch it, he said, you'll never eat meat again after this. And I said, what, what is this documentary? This must be amazing. You know, I thought it was probably a health thing. And when I watched it and I saw these animals getting slaughtered, I thought, oh, that's what he meant? I wouldn't want to eat meat again after seeing animals slaughtered? I couldn't care less about this. Bro, I thought you knew me, man. Like, you know, I don't, I don't care about animals at all. And I think about that now. And I think how far I've come, and I think, whoa, man, what kind of sick monster were you? <laughs> but it wasn't that. You know, I was a good person to the best of my ability. I would never deliberately hurt an animal. I didn't hate animals or despise animals. I never tried to hurt anybody. My goal in life was to always be a good person and to help others and to be kind you know, I was a little bit selfish sometimes, but I tried pretty hard to be a good person. So my experience is a little bit different to Ren's because I think you said that veganism was a natural progression for you and you, through being loving, you got to that point. Where for me, I kind of see my own journey a little bit differently. I think what happened to me, I mean, I don't think I really could feel for these animals while I was eating them. So I don't, know if I, I don't know if I maybe would have got there just by being a loving person. I feel like I was already doing a pretty good job of that. And since 
with some of the things I've gone through. I, I've read a quote, a Buddhist quote, and the quote is, the eating of meat extinguishes the seed of great compassion. And luckily for me, I tried going vegetarian for a week just for my health. And during that time, I felt really good, and so I decided to look more into it. And that's when I saw what happened to the animals again. And I'd seen it before, like I mentioned, but this time when I saw it, I felt something. I hadn't eaten meat for a while. I felt something. And I saw it, I thought, whoa, I remember very similar footage to this, but this is not sitting well with me today. I'm actually, I don't think I'm okay with this. And so I don't know if that's a, a real scientific thing you can, you can um, study. I'm not sure, but to me that quote reigns true. I think while I was consuming animal products, it was extinguishing my seed of great compassion. While I was eating them, I couldn't feel for them. It was too conflicting for me. Perhaps it was just like a psychological thing, like a cognitive dissonance. I couldn't feel for them. And so, so grateful that I just tried it out for a week and actually felt good and didn't just eat lettuce and tofu the whole time. I thought, oh, maybe I could stick with this. I felt really good. So that's when I started living more spiritually, to, to put it like that. That's when I realized, well, hang on a second. What are my core values? Let me ask myself that question. Peace, being a peaceful person, being a respectful person, being a loving person, being a compassionate person, non-violent. And I was being those things to humans, to one species, and kind of to dogs. I didn't love them, but I was like, they're okay. I'm not going to eat them. <laughs> but I thought, why aren't I extending those qualities, those very positive qualities, why aren't I extending those to other species? Why am I just keeping it for a select few? And I couldn't really answer that question for myself, which was annoying because I didn't want to stay being a vegetarian, obviously. And I thought, oh man, this is not the life for me, you know? I, I love eating meat, I love the taste and all that. But what far outweighed the taste of meat is that I did want to live in alignment with those qualities because that is so much more important, being a good person, modeling good behavior like as that's been spoken about here. That is so much more important in a world that is so far off the mark, so far from that. You know, there's so much disaster and destruction and tragedy in this world and so much of it is avoidable, I think. It's actually just a lack of something, like Ren said. It's a lack of love. It's a lack of compassion. It's a lack of living spiritually, living in alignment with your core values. So many otherwise good people, unknowingly in a big way, are being very violent and very cruel and very abusive through the choices we make and through the products we consume. When we consume the products of violence and torture and death, surely that has some effect on us. And I don't know if this is true, because I saw it on the internet, but, <laughs> but I did see this cool photo on the internet one time. I don't know what they're called, maybe someone here does. It's, they, they take the, there's these photos, these cameras they take, and it like measures someone's aura or something. Curling camera, nobody knows, great. I don't know either. Anyway, I don't look. It's like it's, it's like this thing, and it puts this kind of it like kind of measures the energy around it or something. Now, I don't even know if this is legit. I'm not saying this is a thing. So just hear me out here. <laughs> but there was this photo they took of a piece of meat, allegedly, and it was this like dim and patchy kind of surrounding energy, right? And then they took a photo of an apple. And the apple was beaming. It looked so good. It had this beautiful thing happening around it. I don't know if they're a real thing, but I think, the, I think the, um, there's some truth to that anyway, whether those cameras are real or not. There's some truth to that, that consuming the energy of death versus consuming the energy of life is going to have a big change on who we are as people, on our psyche, because when we eat, and consume the products of violence and torture and death, 
I do believe, just through the experience I've had, that in some significant way, it does extinguish the seed of great compassion. And I think we can see that when we talk to good people. You know, when we talk to otherwise good people and say, hey, guess what? You're an animal lover, right? Well, there's this new thing out called veganism. (laughs) It's really cool. And it means you don't have to contribute to the violence and killing of these beautiful innocent sentient beings and people say I don't want to hear about it don't spoil my dinner man you know and then it's confusing because you think but you're such a good person I'm telling you about so much violence that is being contributed to by you and you don't have to be so it's a confusing thing and I think I think there's a big part of that is because of this turned off part of people's compassion And I I think it's an unconscious thing. I don't think people do this deliberately. But I do think that there is some sort of effect of when we we eat these things, when we consume these things, when we buy these things, you know. Especially when it's a little bit conscious in you. You know, ignorance is one thing. When you don't know, you don't know. But when you're starting to hear a little bit about veganism, oh, my mate went vegan the other day. And then you're buying these things and then you're eating these things. It's a little bit less unconscious and I think that makes it a little bit more serious on how it affects our psyche you know it's it's a more negative thing to do then because you're a little bit more aware about what you're doing so I think this has a massive effect on our world I always think I always wonder what would our world be like if there wasn't so much violence and killing and cruelty in the air kind of like what you were talking about with when that woman cleaned her glasses and you were feeling it you're like, oh my, oh my, for some reason I feel like cleaning my glasses right now. <laughs> I think right now there is so much cruelty and killing, senseless, senseless murder, billions and billions and trillions actually of innocent beings who feel pain and suffer just like us. They want to be with their families and take care of each other just like us in a lot of ways. And we, we slaughter them for no better reason than because we, that because we like how they taste. So when there's so much cruelty in the air, when there's slaughterhouses 30 minutes from here and factory farms that way, when this is all around us and even closer to home, when we are ingesting this inside of us and, and almost everybody is, is it any wonder that we are in the type of world that we are where violence is the norm. I put up a a quote last night on my Facebook and Instagram by John Lennon, which I'm probably going to get wrong because the pressure's on. So it was something like, we live in a world where... Oh, I'm going to get this wrong. We live in a world where um, lovemaking has to be hidden and violence is, um, is normal to be out in the open. It was put more eloquently than that, but you get the point. You get the point. (laughs) So that is the world we live in. Violence is on everybody's plate, you know, and and people don't even see it there. They don't. They don't. I never saw it. I was just eating my food. You know, people don't even see it. Or if they do know what happened, they think it's fine. They think it's okay. So that's the world we live in. And what else has happened in this world? War, greed harming each other, harming ourselves, depression, stress, anxiety, medicating ourselves with those things, drugging ourselves from the feelings we have, watching TV to drug ourselves, eating food to drug ourselves, to numb ourselves from all of these things. This is the world we live in where we can't even really sit here and be comfortable just by sitting here and perhaps, I don't know, but I have a feeling that because of what is so rampant in our society, that, has some, that carries some kind of energy, or putting it inside of us, that carries some kind of negative energy. And so we're born into it, so we don't even feel the difference of it. It's just here, it's just there. We, we're born into it, we don't know any different. But we feel stressed and we feel anxious and we feel tired and we, we don't want to associate with each other, or we do with anger and, and all these kind of things. And I always wonder... How much better would we all just feel if all of that cruelty, all of that negative energy just ended? How much more positive would we feel? Would we feel more positive? I think so, but obviously I can only speak from my own experience that by going vegan, 
I feel more aligned with who I am in my core. I do feel more peace because I know that my actions are creating more peace. I do feel like I'm aligned more with non-violence because I know my actions are less violent than they were before. I do feel more love because my circle of compassion has grown. It's not just about humans anymore and the occasional dog that doesn't slobber on me. <laughs> it's grown to even fish, which I don't even, you know, like when you look at cows, yeah, they've got big, beautiful eyes and they're cute and things like that. I don't find fish very cute, but I still care. <laughs> I still don't want people to like hook them in the mouth and kill them, you know? And so I feel so great that I feel so privileged and so, so extremely grateful that Something I think we're all kind of searching for. How can we feel more love? How can we feel more compassion? How can we live more spiritually, live more aligned with the people that we are? It's so easy. You can just go vegan and get more of those things you want, more of those good feelings and contribute to far less of those negative things. And that's how we can create a better world. It's, it's as simple as you get to the supermarket and you usually buy cow's milk and you just... You just do that, and you get almond milk instead, and you walk out like, I did a good deed today. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy. I mean, and, and a, there is one good thing about how, how bad it is what we do today, how cruel our actions are, because there's so much room for improvement. There's such a great deal of room for improvement, and that improvement can be made so simply. But the first thing, first and foremost, before you point the finger, you know, before you even encourage someone else to do better, is about looking in the mirror. Where am I causing harm? How can I contribute to making this world a better place? How can I reduce the amount of harm I'm already causing? How can I live more in alignment with my core values, whatever they are? But I think for most people I've ever met, the core values are generally very similar in good people. Be peaceful, be kind, be loving, be compassionate, be respectful, be non-violent. And the beauty of that is there's a very clear path to get to that point, and we all know what that is. So next step, once you've gone vegan, spread that gift, spread that love, and that's how we make this world a better place. Thank you very much.